Welcome everybody. This is the Thursday evening Viper Trading Webinar. If you are here to learn about trading the futures markets using the Viper tools, you are absolutely in the right place. Uh, tonight's topic is uh, trading gold and crude oil. However, we are also going to try to mix in a few other instruments and not just limit it to those uh, uh, two futures instruments. But first, got to knock our standard disclaimer out of the way, so let's get started. All communications from Viper Trading Systems are for educational purposes only. Futures and Forex trading does involve risk, and there is a risk of loss. Nothing contained in this webinar or other webinars, including the live trading room, are to be construed as investment or trading advice. And, of course, everybody does know that you do trade at your own sole discretion. Hey, Carl. Uh, he's saying he's got a blue screen. Hey, just a quick double check here. Everybody, here, you know what? Let me do this. Let me switch over to uh, screen one. Uh, yeah, you know, we might have a problem here. You know what? I get all mixed up. I get all mixed up. I get all mixed up. My um, my BIOS, uh, <laughs> quick story, my BIOS battery died over the weekend, and when it did, it kind of messed up the graphics cards. Nah. Nah. Okay, let me put on what I think is screen one, and you should see a gold chart. Let's try this. Gold chart, checking gold chart. Yes, okay, so that's screen one. Yeah, the other three got it, it got jumbled with that BIOS uh, reset. It, it kind of freaked me out a little bit, but I had to shuffle some of the screens around here. Okay, we're good. We got the gold up. All right, if you're coming in late, don't worry. We're just getting just getting kicked off here. You're, you're not missing anything. All right, let's start off talking about gold here. Um, uh, I think a lot of uh, uh, traders that we we talk with um, sometimes uh, uh, I don't want to say have a, a, a fear of trading gold or, or that it's, there's some kind of mystery to trading it I mean you know it, it, it's just like other instruments it's pretty much like other instruments although sometimes it can be a little funky in the way that it just you know sort of will sit there for a while and not do anything and then all of a sudden it'll pop so in that sense you know, it's different than the equities, no question about it. It's different than crude. And so it's got its little quirks that you have to uh, 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 get used to. But let's see if we can sort of demystify some of this and get some of you interested in gold a little bit. I'm not suggesting you go out and put a gold chart up and load, leverage it all up tomorrow and start doing it. I'm just going to show you some opportunities, and then you can decide what you want to do. So here we are. This is, uh, uh, for those of you that are visiting, I see some new names around a free trial here. Um, uh, what you're looking at is uh, is gold. It's just still a December contract. We have our power meters here. We have our background colors, uh, green, red, and then, of course, this sort of transitional color. Obviously, everybody can see the, the bar colors, yellow, blue, and red. And the most prominent thing, of course, on the chart is the, is the, uh, the bands, the mid-band here, the thick band in the middle we call the mid-band. Uh, and then we got four bands above and four below. And we'll talk about how to use those in trading uh, in just a second. And then, of course, the predictors are, are um, more or less swing levels. They, they paint in real time. That's these sort of oval-looking uh, indicators with the with the dash line in the middle. That's our indicators, and you can uh, predictors. You can, you know, obviously turn them on and turn them off depending on you know way you want to look at them. Take some trades or toggle them back on. It's up to you. All right. Now let's talk a little bit. Now I know that this is uh, we're looking at the pre-market session before we uh, started uh, to uh, trade. So uh, just so everybody is oriented here, I'm in California this is Pacific time, so midnight, um, you know, Pacific's right here at this line. This would have been the uh, Asian trading session overnight. Here uh, you see you had a little bit of an uptrend sort of break out of a little consolidation patch and you start to go up a little bit here came here right around midnight now this is going into the European session now pop quiz make sure everybody's still awake and paying attention um, and this is in the pre-market so 5 a.m. Pacific is over here I think Gary opens the room right around 6 and he has uh, gold and he has oil charts up and we'll, we'll advance to 6 630 in just a minute but before we do that 
looking from midnight Pacific to the right. So we're looking from here all the way over here to 5 a.m. Pacific. I see at least one or two, possibly three, short trade setups. Now, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to type in where you think they are. And it could be either time-wise. Let me blow this up real good. Time would be down here. Of course, you see uh, 1 o'clock is here. Uh, 4.30 is here. 5 o'clock is here. 5.03. Or a level. Levels are over here. The levels are over here. Uh, 12.81. 77.50. Thirty seconds on the clock. Type in where you see gold short trades from midnight Pacific till 5 a.m. I see arguably one or I know there's two, but you could make the case there's a third one too. But if you can get two of them, we'll give you uh, we'll give you the gold star. Thirty seconds on the clock. Time wise, where you see it, or level wise level would be calling out and this, is, this isn't one but i'll just say okay uh 1283 so just type in 1283 or 83 either way it's really simple just type it in 20 seconds left there's two arguably three short trades on here on gold 15 seconds where do you see them time wise or level wise level would be the price of course clock winding down Cast your short votes, you gold shorties. Ten seconds. Try to get something in if you can. This is what helps you learn when you when you see these patterns and you see something happen tomorrow, you'll know what to do with it, right? Nine seconds on the clock. Where's the shorts? Where are the short trades here? And don't worry if you're new or visiting, and I see there's some new folks in here. If, you, if you're just confused about what you're even looking at, don't worry. We're going to explain in just a minute. Five seconds left, short trades. Time's almost up. Get them in. Time-wise or level-wise. Two seconds. All right, time's up. So let's go back to midnight. I see some most excellent answers here, Adam. Michael P, 254, 503, 321. From Mario, David D, Peter, Byron, I like those. Manny got some good numbers. I see that. Almost everybody here put something in. Hey, Pat, squeaked in at the last minute. So let me tell you what we're looking at here. So I think you see over here we talked about the fact that gold was in somewhat of a, of a little bit of an uptrend here. Excuse me. Peaked out around this 8380 area over here, right before, shortly before midnight Pacific, ending the Asian session, going into the European session here, and we had a nice uh, mid-band box form. Now this, you know, depending on whether you're um, a night owl or you like to trade uh, in the evening time or however you like to trade. Some of you trade forex uh, or you trade currency futures or you can trade even gold at night if it's moving. Uh, you, you probably, it's hard to say whether you would have let, but by the way, for those of you who are completely new, we have the object trader tool, uh, which is, which is part of our, uh, our tool set. Uh, it sits over here in a panel on the right. And what we're describing is what we call region boxes. So you would take in, uh, the, the region, select region, uh, hit, hit, uh, enter. It would pop up, position it where you want it. You can activate long and short, short only, long only. Now, you could make the case that when this, this box was painting, that uh, you may have selected long only, simply because the background was green still. See? The background was green, and it was sitting here just under the mid-band, and this could have turned out to be what, what, what could have been a, a sort of a deep red bar probe on another move up. However, there was some... some uh, 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 the things that were happening here that could cause you to consider taking the trade the other way, namely the fact that this bounce off the mid-band right here did not get even close to coming back to the top. That's clue number one, yes? We're looking for breadcrumbs and clues along the way on what we might want to think about doing. What's the other thing that showed up here? 
What's the other thing that showed up we haven't talked about here? This little sneaky line. What is this little sneaky snake line here? See it over here? What is that? See it show up every once in a while? It looks like a little snake. What's that? What is that little thing there? It's called stealth. Yeah, it's a red stealth. Exactly. So you had a lower high. You broke support. And you were starting to get the formation of a red stealth right in here. See the stealth line? Bars were red, you're sitting under the mid band, and it's quite possible you could have just inact, uh, activated the short side as well. So you would turn the region box on, allow it to take longs, both longs and shorts. In which case, you probably would have been filled short uh, if you did that and you were present at the time to do it on one of those bars right there. You would have been filled short. Now, if you had missed that, um, and this is one thing that we is sort of a centerpiece of our, our teaching is that you have to patiently wait for a market to thrust in a, in a given direction. Of course, here is down. Uh, we have a number of things acting in our favor now. We have a very solid stealth line following the market down. Yes. The background turns to red. And notice in here that our mid band and all the bands start to stair step down. So what this means is that we've gone into a downtrend uh, as opposed to an uptrend. A downtrend market is lower highs and, and lower lows, and we are trending down as opposed to up over here, right? So now we're looking for shorts, but we can't short thrust moves. We can't get in, you know, if we miss this box up here, we can't short down here. That's one of our rule sets. We never, ever take a trade on a thrust move. And I know it's frustrating. I know it is because we watch several trades just run away from us without any pullbacks, but that's the way the market works. So, so we waited patiently if we were trading gold, and we see it came right back up here to the mid band and wicked it perfectly right in here. Could have uh, had a sell order here uh, around. So, if you said anywhere, if your first short was anywhere around uh, 1280 to 1283. Short, level-wise, you were correct. That was short number one. And time-wise, you would have been looking at uh, somewhere between uh, uh, 320, 320 and uh, 3.40 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. So, if any, I see a lot of your answers are right in the sweet spot there. So, you got that. Perfect. Okay, good. All right, that was short number one on gold. Now, you can see, of course, we got... The next thrust, which turned out to be a beautiful short trade, all the way down to here, taking you down close to 5 a.m. Pacific, in, in, at which time we get another textbook beautiful retracement right back up to the mid-band here. And so the second short, if you said anywhere around 12, 76.50, 76.70, I'd say even 76. Anywhere in here, if you called that area as a short, you were right on. Yeah, you were right on. That was the second short right there. Good calls. I see most of you got that too. Perfect. So you see the pattern here. We're looking for, you know, in, a, in the case of the downtrend, of course, we're looking for thrusts down. We're looking for pullbacks as close as possible to the mid band. And then we're looking for market to roll. Now, let's advance it a little further. Because I think there was a third one here and some of you got it. Let me advance it. Uh, okay, it was right here. Okay, I think I pushed the chart. There we, there we go. This is what it looked like when you, when you were answering your short uh, calls. Now, notice what happens here. By the way, and most of you know, of course, that we use sort of a combination uh, in the case of the short as our trailing stop. Uh, this would be line two here, and then see the red stealth? See how there's a few times where it sort of pokes its head through it? So we trail, 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 trail. We get out. We rebox. We get back in. Same thing happened over here. Trail, trail, trail. Stop out. Box. Get in. And then over here, of course, you can see that the second short stopped out. Well, technically, it, it, it uh, you had the box. You could make the case that was number one. I didn't really count that too much. Although if you typed in the box and you said 017 and a level of around 1281, let me see if anybody put that in. 
Oh, Byron, phew, you got it. Yeah, technically, I suppose that would be that would be short number one right there, that box. That's true. Mm -hmm. Here would be two. Here would be three. And then your stop uh, on that on that third short would be taken out somewhere in here. Now, notice what it does. It doesn't pause, and this happens with gold a lot and other instruments, of course. Is that you get a um, a short covering. Uh, all the market participants who are short from upper levels are now starting to cover. And so we know that that creates an upward draft, which sometimes can pause at the mid-band like it did here and here. Or it could push it all the way to the outermost band as it did right here. Now, I got a two-part question for you collectively as a team here tonight. First of all, Notice how we broke the mid-band and the bar, bars turned blue and the background changed. So five-second question. I'm making sure everybody's all, we're all sticking on the same page here together. Is this a trend change, yes or no, on gold right here? Just type in a Y or an N. you got five seconds. Cast your vote. Is this a trend change, yes or no, right here? Three seconds. Just bam, hit, hit it. Why? N. Don't even think of, you shouldn't even think about it. You should instantly know looking what it is. Two seconds. Why or N? Trend change, yes or no? Time's up. No. No, no, no. This is not a trend change. Now, second part of the question for 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 uh for the team here. What is the name of this type of trade? Right here. Five seconds. I'll give you I'll give you ten seconds on that one. What is the name of this type of trade? Nine seconds. Type in a word. Everybody should know this, okay? This is like basic trading, Viper trading knowledge 101. We're not doing anything complicated here. This is the basics. What is that called? Five seconds left. There's a name for it. We have a name for it. Three seconds. Cast your vote. There's a word for it. Something spooky. Something that happens around Halloween time. I'm helping you out a little bit there. <laughs> it's romantic. <laughs> scary. Who put scary? Carl. Okay. All right. If you call this a phantom trade. Now, the, the phantom trade is nothing more than uh, in the case of a downtrend here where we're selling off, right? We're selling off. We're taking the shorts. We stop out. We plow up through the mid band. We go to the outermost band. We used to call this in the old days a deep R probe, where the market will go all the way to the outermost band. Technically speaking, as we said a few seconds ago, this is not a trend change, not a trend change. This is technically a phantom short. So you want to sell this up out here. When it rolls over, you actually wanted to short this here. And so if you called that on the first question, Time-wise, it would have been somewhere around 5.04-ish to 5.05 when it broke. And level-wise, that was around uh, 12.78.20. I'd go all the way to 12.77.50. So anywhere in here, if you called that as another, that you saw that as a phantom short, you were correct. Because it's a phantom of the opera. Yeah, that's right, Mindy. Now, look, I know some of you, we've talked about this scores of times in other webinars. A lot of you don't like this type of trade. Some of you typed in scary, um, not romantic or whatever. I understand that. You know, in a downtrend, I understand that for most traders, and it's perfectly okay, when you get beyond this mid-band and you start poking up into here, you start getting nervous. And so, you know, there's there's a little trepidation taking this short. I understand that. And so if you don't take it, it's not the end of the world. But technically speaking, it's a phantom short. Now we come all the way back down. By the way, on a phantom short, I'm going to help you out. If you took that short, um, your initial target is to get back to the mid-band. That's what we're looking for in phantoms. So in other words, you, it comes up, you get the deep probe, it rolls over, and you want to get the first, if you put two on, your first contract should target should be right here. And then, as you can see, it went on to try to challenge the bottom swing down here. So that's how you play a phantom short 
You see how that was not a trend change? It was a trend continuation, only a deeper probe. And the reason you get that sometimes is because of the short covering, creating that upward draft. All right? Yeah, no, that's not a trend change. That's a, that's a phantom short mini. Yeah. All right, now let's move on to 6 a.m. Pacific. Now, this would have been right about the time where Gary – uh, so th that ends the sort of instructive part of this. I'm going to continue to show trades, but from here forward, we're going to go look at 6 a.m. Pacific when the room was open, and then we're going to start advancing the chart and talking about what to do. Okay, you ready? Here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to put 6 a.m. on the chart. And I'm going to gradually advance the chart as if we're watching it together in real time, reconstructing the live room opening up, and we're looking at a gold chart together. Now, when you see a trade set up, I want you to type in the letter T. Okay? I'm going to go, I'm going to sort of go a little bit, couple bar by couple bar. We're going to look at it together in real time, and we're going to pretend we're watching this chart together. And you type in the letter T when you think you see a trade. You don't have to say what to, you don't have to call it long or short. You don't even have to say what tools you're going to use. All you have to do is type in a T. All right? Okay, here we go. Starting the clock right now. Here we go. All right, 557. Gary's open in the room at 555, so technically a room is just opening up right here. Okay, you're just starting to watch the chart. Here we go. Let me blow it up a little bit. Here's 5.59. Here's 6 a.m. 6 a.m. Pacific. 6 It's heading up. You can see the gold is heading up. The trend is no longer down, at least for now. Okay, we're watching it bar by bar. Now we're at 6.01, 6.03. Pulling back off the highs at 12.81.10. Now we're at 6.06. .06. You're about six, six to eight minutes into watching the chart in the room. Okay, here we're at 6.12. Depending on your entrance into the room, you would be uh, looking at the chart right now, right between 6.10 and 6.12. So you've been watching eh, maybe close to 10 to 12, 15 minutes. Okay, gold sitting right here. I'm going to continue to advance gold. 6.11. 612, 613, 615, 617. All right, let me go back. Most of you got this. Most of you got this. So, in this case, when we have a market open, we have an equity market open and news events, what we do is we talked about this before. Here was our thrust. Everybody sees that. When 6 a.m., well, the thing that impressed me with this exercise was the fact that as I advanced the chart from here to here, nobody, none of you typed in T, which is perfect because we know that that is the thrust, and we never take trades on a thrust. So that was a total no-no. Nobody typed in a T. Perfect. Total gold star for everybody on that one. All right. Now, now we begin our retracement. Peaked out at, uh, at this 81.10, and we start to pull back. Now, when the market paused right here, and it formed these yellow bars just right above the mid-band, almost all of you typed in the letter T, which was perfect. Here you would have deployed a region box from Object Trader. And I would argue the case, just like this other trade over here. Remember this other one over here where we did the box? Remember that one? And we made the case that this was the European Open and that you should let the box go either way and don't be scared to take the short, even though it was a green background. Remember this discussion a few minutes ago? Well, it was the same thing over here. This is 6 a.m. Pacific. We're just opening the room when the market's getting started. So we have a similar condition happening right here. Where technically speaking, and this, this throws some of you off, and I understand that sometimes, that you know, look, Charles, the, the you know, you're telling me the, the mid band is stepping up, all the bands are stepping up, the bars are blue, I have a green, nice green stealth here, the background's green. As far as I'm concerned, at this point, we are in an uptrend. 
and you could try to make the case that you should activate long only and be looking for a bounce off the mid band here now look that's perfectly acceptable if at the time and this this is true of any instrument we're going to look at crude we're going to look at other instruments this is true of any instrument you have a choice when the market comes back to the mid band and sets up a region box here you can decide whether to let the market trade up in the case of the uptrend only or you can activate both sides and let the market take the short. In active markets, usually within the first hour of trading, you, you, and, and it's moving quickly and you're getting good volume, you can pretty much let them trade either way and let it take the short. Just curious how you trade without a power meter and ellipses. No, I, I trade with them. I just turned the predictors off to, for simplicity's sake, Mindy, to show to show this. I mean, I can leave them on. But, you know, if it helps you to see the trades, I can leave predictor on. I use power meter and I use predictor, predictor all the time. Yeah, I just did that to, for the simplicity of showing the trade, but I can leave it on. If it's easier to see the trade, we'll leave it on. So you can see here, yeah, it it, it, it broke down. Uh, yeah, so, you know, if, if you didn't have the short side on, you would have missed the short. No question about it. Um, and, and, you know, obviously you can see it never broke the top of the box, so there was no long trade here. Yeah, it was a short it was a short uh, reversal breakdown here. All right, good. Most of you got that. Most excellent. Now I'm going to do one more gold trade here, and then we're going to shift over to crude. All right. We're going to do a similar exercise, and we're going to pretend that everybody in here tonight missed that short. We missed it. Whatever reason, we weren't paying attention, you know, we were getting some coffee, petting the dog, whatever, you know, we just missed it. Now, we have to look for another trade, right? So I'm going to advance the chart once again in a similar manner, by bar, bar, bar by bar, like we're watching in real time, and you're going to put in a T when you see another trade set up. Ready? Here we go. We missed this short. We're not in it. So we're looking for another short. Here we go. Type in a T when you see a trade. Okay, whenever you think there's a trade setting up, you type in the letter T. All right, let's pause. Let's pause right here. We've talked about this before. I see everybody typed in a T. There was a couple of you. I don't want to name names. There was there was a couple of them. Uh, the typed in a T like right in here somewhere and, 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 you know, all due respect that we, you know, we, this is the thrust part, right? Remember, we don't ever get in on, we can't, if we miss this entry and we look back and we see it and we missed it and we see that we are in a thrusting move, we know we have to do what? Sit on our hands. We have to sit on our hands. We have to patiently wait for a retracement. And that is because we're going to, many, many times you're going to pull the trigger. You're going to be, you know, the psychology goes like this. Man, this thing is tanking. I see that there was a short rollover up here. I missed it. I missed it. You know, I missed it. I missed it. I want to get in. I want to get in. I'm convinced. Okay, I am convinced this is going down. It is tanking. I am missing it. You know, I, I just got to get in. F-O-M-O, -O, fear of missing out. And sure enough, you pull the market trigger short right down here. You're convinced this thing is tanking, and you hit a market order short, and you get in right down here. So your initial stop is sitting somewhere, I don't know, 12 or 15 ticks up, sitting up, up in here somewhere. And so now you're upside down. You're feeling pain. You're feeling pain. Nothing but pain. You get in. You had one candle that went in your favor. You were up like two, three ticks, and you felt good about yourself because this trade looked like that. 
and you were convinced it was going to come up here and hit this stealth line and roll over and just tank right back down, and you're just going to make a ton of money when it keeps tanking. But sure enough, the thing's upside down, right, right out of the gate, right there. Down 10, down 20, down 50, down 100. Depending on how many contracts, could be more, right? Here's your stop sitting up here, and you're saying to yourself, man, I hope that doesn't get that stop up there. That would really be terrible. I don't. Okay, now you're feeling some pain. It's rolling over a little bit, coming back to your entry. You're feeling a little better here, right? Uh, back to break even. I'm not going to hit. Oh, not a problem. Not a problem. It's going gonna, gonna to be okay. It's going to be all right. Oh, no. Oh, bam. Stop taking out just like that. How many of you, get, you experience trades like that? Pull the trigger right at the time when the thing is peeking out, down or up. You got your stop in place, and the stupid market comes and takes it out. It's like, and you always say to yourself, man, you know what? There must be some kind of camera spy in Wall Street because they just know when I'm going to get in, and they know where my stops are. Why does this keep happening to me? Okay, I see some of you typing in. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you could scalp the pullbacks to the stealth, Carl, but if you take that, what he's saying is these small little micro pullbacks. Can you short that as a get? You could. Uh, technically, you, you know, that that's not very much of a retracement. When you take those, you know you got to keep an extremely tight stop in case it goes in your face. I wouldn't give that thing more than a couple of ticks. In this case, the stealth retracement worked out. You made a little bit of money on it. Normally, we, um, yeah, so what's happening, if, the, if this is happening to you, what's happening is you, you went through the uh, psychological scenario that I just described where you're waiting to be convinced. You didn't get this trade. You may not even be able to look back and see it. But the bottom line is you're watching it tank, and it's running away from you, and you're not in it. And then you're convinced to get in, but it's all the way down here, right at the bottom. And sure enough, the market comes right back up and nails your stops. So the only way to stop that is, very simply, to not buy or sell thrust moves. It has to be retracing to get in. Now, question. Why do we wait? So to answer, who asked the stealth question? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, hold on a second. Sorry about that. In terms of potential trade uh, 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 follow-through and uh, uh, meat on the bone, as we usually like to call it, do you think it's better to take a trade that is just wicking stealth? Or do we think that it's better – that would be S – or do you think it would be better to take trades that come up here closer to the mid-band? You would type in an M. S. Which one's better in terms of likelihood of success percentage-wise? And we don't have to give an exact percentage. Would it be better to short the stealth retracements, these sort of shorter micro retracements, or patiently wait till we get somewhere up around M, the mid-band? Less five seconds, four seconds. You should instant. Everybody should instantly know this. Yes. Time's up. Mid band trades. Why? Anybody? Everybody in here typed in M. Good. You can still take these. We've talked about shallow retracements. Okay, it's possible to take shallow retracements. And in powerful moving markets to get in, sometimes you have to do that. Yeah, no question about it. That happened today after the market closed, and the thing ran up 200 ticks. Why? Why mid-band? Why, why do we want markets to come back up here? What is the mystery with this, this mid-band thing? Why, is, why do we want that to happen? Why do we want these retracements to come down here? Why? Why do we want you know, is the dealio with that? Hmm? Think about it for a second. Why is it so powerful? Why do we wait for the mid-band? What are we waiting for? Because you have a bigger target around 20 ticks as opposed to because you're looking at fib retracements overbought and oversold. More meat on the bone. JS, you nailed it right on the on the peak, on the on the uh, on the bone. 
So what we're saying here is when you think about the retracement's depth when a market is moving in a thrust move like this, when it gives a micro retracement back to stealth, that wicks it or slightly breaks it, at the time it's happening, the support swing is located, technically speaking, right here, yes? So if it did roll, we are hoping on that micro retracement that it at least gets to here, yes? In this case, it broke it just a little bit and it went a little further, but that doesn't always happen, like over here, for instance, right? Now, if you contrast this, so we're saying that that, in fact, is your target. That's like one or two bars, if even that. Now, when you look at a retracement that goes much deeper up near the mid-band, and it hits it, comes close to it, or rolls over, where is our target located in regards to the trade entry? I'll give you a hint. We are where when we short that rollover at the mid band, where do we want that puppy to go? Right back on down to the bottom, yes. So from a from a uh, sheer likelihood hood point of view and target, uh, uh, you know, P and L point of view or risk return point of view, where you could technically put your stop very close above the mid band, so you're looking at a very, you know, tight stop scenario risk return, right? So your risk is very small and we are looking for the market to go where? Well, ideally at least back down to here. So look at the size of the two arrows. That's why we it's a risk return thing. That's exactly right, Dennis. Right. It's a risk return thing. Just visually you can see that, right? That's when you have more meat on a bone when more when markets pull back. Okay, good. Most almost everybody here is doing this perfect. Let's get a crude chart down here. I don't want to spend all night on gold. Uh, and look at some setups here. I'm going to do, I'm going to do some easy uh, oil setups, and then I'm going to do some tougher oil setups. Let's go back if we can to where crude opened. Uh, uh, let me look at some different spots on crude here. Uh, crude pit open, which by the way I think it was slow today. Um, we're at six o'clock. Yeah, eh, it's probably not a good example. Although we could use it as an example. Let's do this. I like to do it this way. And this is probably a good reminder for the, for, for those. Uh, I, I, Jim, I see that. I see crude, crudes coming to the mid-band. Um, uh, 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 you know what? Let's just open up with that. That's a good call. You said that several times, Jim. Let's go ahead and show that. All right. Is this a uh, Is this a crude trade right now setting up? Yes or no? Type of wind and wiring in. Five seconds. It, it, crew's right here, by the way. If you're just just tuning, you're just tuning in. Here's crew right here. This candle is forming as we speak. Is this a long trade? I'll help you out. The trend is up. Is this a long trade on crude right now? Yes or no? What say you, team? What say you, team? Three seconds. What you gonna do when they come for you? Three seconds. Okay, time's up. Hold on, stand by. I have to check something here real quick. Now, most of you said yes, some of you said yes long, and there's a handful of you that actually typed in that I would prefer for crude to come down and actually touch the mid-band. So you, you have a couple of choices here. Let, this is this is real time. Market's really slow. I would bet the volume is really low too, and you might have a two two or three tick spread to deal with. So I'm not I'm not saying to buy oil here, just to be clear. <laughs> if you do, do it in sim. Don't do a real um, uh, you know, I would I would never trade that live right now, as slow it is, as it is, and the problems you can wind up with. So, but you could make the case that you could take a region box from Object Trader and draw it like that. In the case here where it's slow after hours, 
I would personally suggest taking long only simply because if you turned on a short and you get a bar sort of bip down underneath the bottom of your box and you turn short on you could get sucked into you know a case where a couple of bars come down like that wick the mid band close you're short you're stuck short and then next thing you know the thing blammo takes off on you you'd almost be better off in the case of the short letting it come down to you know if it hypothetically broke the box you know come down to some kind of swing level if it's going to in fact be short come up close to the bottom of the box or near the mid band and then roll over and go ahead and take the short so you see that in the room a lot when we're looking for trend changes sometimes in markets is we say okay well I'm looking for a, bu a, bu a bounce on on uh, in this in this case crude and the way it's drawn here with a region box and you turn long on only then if a bar closed up you'd be filled long you'd be filled long like that that would get you long Now, if you say, well, Charles, you know, that's too far away from the mid-band. I see there's still some meat on the bone. Meat on the bone meaning that it's possible that if you were filled long, that you could at least get back up to here. And that would be a decent trade, right? Now, if it never closes up and it goes deeper, and this is what Byron was saying, and, and this is a good, this is a healthy way to look at it, is you say, okay, well, listen, I, I want it to come down and be closer to here. Right? That's basically what Byron typed in. I want it to be close. I want it down at or close to the mid band. I understand that. But the trade off we all know when we see some of these markets is it never gets down to here. You know, the thing closes up, it hits this and then plows right through it. And next thing you know, things run 20, 30 ticks and you completely miss the trade. So there's nothing wrong with taking the box here, in my opinion. I think you're close enough to the mid band to take the long. Now, that being said, looking back on the past uh, two hours or three hours of, uh, or even back into the late morning session, I see two nice long trades on oil. And for, I'll give you 15 seconds on this one, either time-wise down here or location-wise in terms of price, uh, do we see two long trades 15 seconds on the clock type in where you see two long trades and don't I'm not counting this one the one that's setting up right now this is prior to this so look back this way you would type in a time here's the time down here 819 1037 you know etc uh, and then here's the levels over here you can see the swing levels 5230, 5250. There is at least two long trade setups that everybody, everybody tonight should see. They're pretty straightforward. They might not be perfect, but they're pretty close. 12 seconds for you, left for you to call the long trades on crude. Long trades on crude. Donde esta? Where are they? Nine seconds remaining for your long calls. Time's almost up. I see some great numbers coming in from Michael P., Jim S., Peter, Roger, Manny, Jay. I like those numbers. Those look good. PW weighing in. Perfect. Byron, good. Dennis S., right on the money. Like those. Mario, D. Okay, four seconds if you're going to get a, a call in on the longs. Time's almost up. Take a look. All right. D squeaked in. Okay, good. All right. Just real quick. Okay, so so where I see it here, let's go back. And we can see that the that the uh that uh, uh crude had come out of a consolidation patch prior to a sell off. I'm not gonna go back and look at the sell off, but the background was red, yes. And you can see, excuse me. We got a green stealth, and the market pokes up. So I'm not I'm not going to count this one over here um, because I expanded the chart to show it. So that didn't really count. But what I did want to show was this: was that this, in fact, was your uh, where it started to thrust 
uh, you got a slight pullback, not much, and then it did almost kind of a little bit of a double double top here around this uh, 6280 area. Uh, in which case, then it started to retrace right into a predictor, just above the mid band, forming yellow bars right here. So I would say if you said anywhere around uh, for the first long trade on the retracement, uh, anywhere from around 9.38 to 9.53, it sat here for almost 15 minutes. There was plenty of time to draw a region box and take this trade, right? Now, this would have been late in the morning, so if you, you know, could, it's quite possible you weren't trading crude anymore if you were in the room and already done, but the fact of the matter is there was a long trade right here, yes? See it? Level-wise, that would have been right around um, 5230 to 5240. You said anywhere in there. That was your first long. I see most of you got that. Perfect. And then, then she followed through with a, with a nice thrust move up here. You know, depending on the location of your stops, it might have got you here or it definitely got you here. And so long trade number two was located right here on this retracement right here where it wicked the mid band. Time-wise, that would have been somewhere right around 1120 to 1127. So anywhere 1120, 1125, 1127. I see most of you got that too. Dennis, Manny, yeah, most of you got that one too. And then uh, location-wise, 5245 to um, 5250, 52, anywhere right in here. If you, call, if you spotted that and called that out as long, that was long number two. Uh, and right now, of course, you see we're just stuck right here. Now, I want to go back and I want to talk about the crude pit open because it was quite challenging this morning. And I want to discuss how you can deal with that in the event that tomorrow you get up and crude looks like this at the pit open. Let's go back to 6 a.m. Pacific. Hold on. Let me clean this chart off. Stand by. Uh, if everybody, everybody saw that. Okay, so I'm going to clear the drawing tools out. There we go. So a nice clean chart at 6 a.m. Now, before I look at 6 o'clock, actually, I'll go 5.55 because that's when Gary opens the room. I, I want to do something here in the pre-market that we need to do to prepare ourselves to trade crude or other markets that look similar to this. Now, I'm going to show you the pre-market on crude going into the pit open. It looked like this. Now, if you open up a crude oil chart tomorrow morning and it looks like this, what is your initial reaction to looking at this chart? You should, you should have an immediate opinion and reaction as to what this market is doing prior to the 6 a.m. open on, on the crude pit. Let me help you out. Is it trending? Is there a trend here? Are you heading up? Are you heading down? What, what is going on with crude here? What is going on right here in this area right here, right here? circling with my cursor it's range bound it's in a huge sideways range bound chop now we talked about this and I haven't said it in several webinars my apologies for that I'll try to say it more but one of the best things you can do is and Gary has entire webinars dedicated to this where he shows where to draw the lines I'm gonna draw a couple lines on here okay I would put a line more or less kind of down in this area right here, and I'd put a second line um, at the top of the range, more or less kind of up in here. Quick word about support and resistance lines. Just a quick two-second word about it, okay? Now, you know, I know some of you, and, and, and sometimes I am too, are perfectionists, and you want everything to be perfect, so you want to get all, every swing up, Every little swing down should be contained perfectly within the support and resistance level so it's real clean and clear and you see where everything is. The fact of the matter is we know markets just don't work like that, right? Sometimes they're going to come to your support line and sometimes they're going to break it. Sometimes they won't quite get there. So what you have to do, here's a good way to think of it, right? You want to visually just find a preponderance of candles, tops, and bottoms. In other words, where are they all kind of bottoming out? And where are they all kind of topping out? And then sort of pick a middle spot and just throw a line there. In other words, you don't have to sit there for, you know, 
<laughs> 10 minutes thinking about where you perfectly put a support and resistance line, just find find a, a level that kind of syncs with all of them and just go ahead and put your line there now. Now, how large is this range? And is it tradable? What do you think? Is this range tradable? Yes or no? Tomorrow morning you wake up, you go into the you go into the room, you pull your chart up, and you say, I'm going to look at trading some crude this morning, and it looks just exactly like this. What are you going to do? Are you going to trade it, yes or no? That's, that's the bottom line question, right? Yes or no? Five seconds on the clock, are you going to trade it? Yeah, and it's actually a two-part question. You're right. You're correct there, Robert. Um, a trade tradeability can be different than whether you trade it or not. Like you could look at it and you could say, and you're right, somebody, uh, I think it was Robert typed in, from a tradeability point of view, 20 uh, support is down here just under 52-ish, and the top's closer to 30. So yeah, 20, 25, almost 30 tick range. From a technical tradeability point of view, you could, there's enough meat on the bone to trade it. Yes. Because we say we don't want to be under 20 ticks. So if you're 20, 25, 30 ticks or, or, or bigger, larger, it's tradable. It's considered technically tradable. But on the other hand, you have to know yourself and whether you are good at trading ranges. Are you good at trading ranges? Can you short the top and be comfortable with it? Can you buy the bottom, cover your short, and be comfortable with it? If the answer is yes, then you would type in yes, I'll trade it. On the other hand, if you've tried to train ranges and you've not done well at it, like you, every time you do it, almost every time with a high percentage of loss factor, then you probably shouldn't trade it, <laughs> notwithstanding what instrument you're looking at, right? It really doesn't matter what instrument you're looking at. It could be any of these. If you say, look, Charles, you know, I'm just not good at ranges. You know, I tried all the thing I can. You just scalp ranges. And I just can't do it. Well, then the answer is no. So let's go ahead and advance this chart into 6 a.m. open for crude. And we'll pretend that this was uh, t t today. Well, well, this was today. Let's pretend it's tomorrow morning. And you type in when you think you see a trade. Okay? We're going to do this exercise for the next uh, two minutes. And then I, I have to wrap up a little early tonight. Okay, we're coming on the crude pit open. You ready? Here we go. Bar by bar. You're going to make the call. Let me blow the bar, make the bars bigger. Hold on a second. 5.30, pre-market. Yeah, analysis is done. Here's your support and resistance line. You've done everything. You're ready to go. And you decided, okay, the thing's 25, 30 ticks. I'm going to trade it. So you type in a T when you see a trade. And we're not counting right now. This is not a T. I'm going to advance it. And then you say T. Ready? Here we go. Okay, now we're at 6 o'clock. Gary's opened the room. You're in the live room looking at the market together. You're all in the room together. And it's a uh, crude pit just opened, 6 a.m. Pacific. And this is what you see. Okay? All right, here we go. All right, I'm going to pause. I'm going to pause here because there's a handful of, a handful of you who typed in T when you got this pullback to the to the, to the uh, mid band and it came up, pierced the resistance and rolled over. There was a handful of you, uh, who was it? Michael P, Adam J, P W. There was several of you who said T when it came here that this was a short, this was a, tr a trade. That's correct. Now, in ranges like this, this is a pop quiz before we advance the chart further. Is it a good idea to do mid-band boxes when you're in a range like this? Is this the type of trading we, we want to use mid-band region boxes on when it's in a range like this right here? Is this a good idea? What do you think? Putting mid-band boxes on when you're when you got a range like the, like we're looking at right here on crude. Is that is that a good idea? No, 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 no. Look. How many times have we been in the room when NASI goes into a range 
where it's got eight or ten ticks above the mid-band, 16 or 18 or 20 tick range, and it's wicking down, it's coming up, it's hitting the mid-band, it's punching up, and the support resistance are just like this, just above the mid-band and below the mid-band. There's no meat on the bone. By the time you get filled out of this box, you're right at resistance. You have to buy and sell the extremes. Okay, just to be clear on range trading, you're shorting here, and you're covering, and you're buying down here. You short and buy and sell the extremes. You don't do mid boxes on tight ranges like that. There's no meat on the bone here. You're not getting long out of here. You know, you're already long from down here, or you're already short from here, and you're covering down here. Well, it, it, technically it wasn't, Jim. He's saying that was risky because it was a higher low. Well, technically it wasn't, really. Okay, it took the swing out by three ticks. That's what I was trying to say, That's and that's a good point. Let's go back to that, okay? Just because these two bars closed above here and above there, that's not that's not any kind of a trend change or telling you that it's going higher or lower. Is it a risky trade because it poked up and you'd be nervous shorting it? Of course. I'm not denying that. Sure, anybody would be nervous shorting that, poking up like this, or even if you shorted right here and it went against you. That's the dangers of trading ranges. Because if you're trading both sides, shorting the top and buying the bottom, at some point it's going to break either way and you're going to take a loss. That's just how ranges work, right? <laughs> That's how they work. Yeah. But to, a, a, a bar wicking above a swing where you have resistance is not – yeah. Okay. Look, let's move on. I'm almost out of time. Ready? Let's do one more trade together and then we got to wrap. Type in the T. All right, now we're right about 7 o'clock, 7.08. I'm going to keep advancing the chart. All right, look, if you're typing in the T now, you're too late. You're, you're too late. You missed it. The T was down here. What do we say over here? You're buying support. You're covering your short, and you're buying support. It sat down here for like five minutes. Five, in fact, I think Gary bought that, didn't he? Anybody remember? I think Gary actually bought that. We might have been short from up here. I remember we covered at this support, and I think he actually bought it. And your goal was at least to get to the mid-band and to come back up here. Remember? I think he did buy that. That's right. I think he did. I think I passed on that one. Sure enough, you come back up to the top, and it blasts right through it. All right, good. Good session, everybody. I'm going to stop the recorder. Thank you for coming.